And then as people go to different companies, you now have contacts at all these different companies. You guys now should be all connecting with each other on LinkedIn, so you have contacts at the different companies. And then on top of that, the people you work for at your companies or the people you meet while in your internship. Okay, so I mean, I'll give you an example of mine. So through my job, because we work with different entities, I meet people at all these different companies and I make sure I network with them and I connect with them on LinkedIn. So whether it's the Cotton Bowl Classic, whether it's the Cowboys, the Stars, the Mavs, FC Dallas, whether it's um, WWE or the NCAA or the NFL or the NHL, connect with those people. Most people only stay at a job these days, I think less than seven years is the average. Well, everybody moves on to another job. Now you've got contacts in all those other companies. You move on to another job. You've got all these contacts. And that networking is important for either from when you want to look for a job or if you're trying to help a friend or someone you know get a job. For example, on LinkedIn, someone will call me and say, hey, I see you linked to so-and-so from the Cowboys. How well do you know them? They have a social media job. Can you put a word in for me? That's how it works. You can, I have this slide, I, I talk a lot to college classes, SMU, TCU, North Texas, and I have a slide I put up and it shows three stacks of resumes. One that's about this tall, one that's about this tall, and one that's only a small stack. <coughs> so the big stack is everybody that applied. The middle stack is everybody that applied and qualified. The thin stack is everybody who applied, qualified, and knows somebody in the country. You want to be in that little pile when the time comes to either look for another internship or the day comes to go for a full-time job. And that's the importance of networking. People are more comfortable hiring somebody when they've had someone come to them and talk to them. Hey, you know, I know John. I worked with John for three years. John's a great guy, real smart, quick, thinks quick on his feet, organized. I'm now thinking, all right, I gotta talk to John. Rather than somebody on a piece of paper, I don't know. So that's the importance of networking, okay, as you get going in these, in these positions. So I mean, for you guys that are with the Rough Riders, everybody in the Rough Riders front office, you should be making an effort to meet them, get to know them a little bit, connect with them on LinkedIn. Same with the Allen Americans, or whether you're, who's, who's got Learfield? You've got a great opportunity, because Learfield does stuff for colleges all over the country. And Learfield's got full-time employees embedded at these colleges. So, what department are you doing over there? Um, He's gonna be with Matt Lear. Matt Lear's gonna get them around to okay. everybody. So there's, that's a great way to meet people. You know, you guys with the Allen Americans, who's with the Allen Americans? I there's two of you, right? They're doing it with Tommy? Ryan's with Tommy. Josh is with uh, Robert Fada and Kavanaugh. Okay. So, I mean, get to know those guys. But if you're there during the season, if guys come in with the other teams, introduce yourself. Talk to them for a couple minutes. If they're willing to talk to you, hey, how'd you get in business? How'd you get your job? Don't be afraid to talk to the people you meet in your internship and ask them those questions. Okay. It's the only way you're going to gain more knowledge and make more connections. If you're sitting there and you're working a baseball game for the Rough Riders and you just kind of sit in the corner the whole time and you don't talk to anybody and you don't meet anybody, you just do your job. Yeah, you're not really helping yourself advance because you're not meeting people and networking. So, I'm going to give you an example of, there was a guy that came through this course, graduated two years ago now. You haven't talked about him, have you? In the interview? No. Cam. Oh yeah, a little bit, yeah, a little, I talked a little bit. All right. So, this is an extreme example, but I can show you where getting
getting out there and networking and taking advantage of opportunities to help you out. So he was a senior here two years ago, um, decided this is what he wants to do, and tried to figure out how to get into different volunteer opportunities. Volunteer opportunities other than your internship are huge things to take advantage of. So he volunteered for Big 12 Conference Football Media Days, which was at the start. And you guys are lucky being right here. There's a lot of stuff in, in the media vicinity, especially at the start. Volunteer for Big 12 Media Days. By volunteering at the Big 12, he met the people that work for the Big 12. He met people that work for the Cowboys it's in their facility. He met media people. Okay. The next day, the PR guy from the Cowboys comes back down and says hello to him. Hey, how are you? Start talking. Two days later, he gets his contact, they switch the exchange contact information. Two days later, the Cowboys PR guy calls him and says, hey, we're looking for an intern this year. Are you interested? This was a kid between his senior year and his freshman year of college. Senior year of high school, he just graduated from Wake Forest. Okay? He ends up being the Cowboys PR intern all last season. Worked the games, met the guys coming in from the other teams. Met the media. Um, went and worked the College Bowl, the college bowl Classic, uh, excuse me, Cotton Bowl Classic game runs six college football games out there this year. First one Sunday, this week. LSU and Miami on Sunday. Um, he would go with the Cowboys PR rep to the six games and meet the people from the different colleges. A&M, Tech, I think last year it was Michigan when he first came. Michigan, Florida. Sorry? Michigan, Florida. Michigan, Florida, correct. So he met the people from those schools, okay? Then season ends, he has an opportunity and goes to Minneapolis for a week with two of the other guys from the Cowboys and works the Super Bowl. This is a freshman in college, one year older than you guys. Worked the Super Bowl. Internship was ending in May, worked the NFL draft. Internship ended, he worked the NHL draft. That's all before his sophomore year started in college. Because he got out there, he hustled, he met people, built one thing on top of another. One opportunity on top of another. That's how you do, if you really want to do this business, that's how you do it. You get out there, meet people, turn one opportunity into another. Okay. So this program can definitely pay dividends if this is what you want to try to make a career out of in college and then beyond. Okay. So take advantage of a very, very unique opportunity. One of the questions I get a lot is skills. What skills do I need for this business? Transferable skills. What courses should I take in college? So. I always talk about it from a marketing and PR aspect. To me, the first thing you can do, the, the best thing you can do is take writing courses, okay? There is always writing to be done. Social media content, blog content, website content, feature stories, press releases, speaking points for speeches and stuff like that. And it's amazing to me the amount of young students in college I meet that really don't know how to write. I mean, seriously, they don't. I ask, like, I'll ask uh, an intern to write a feature story about something, and they don't get the concept of writing a feature story. So, writing, any type of writing class you can take is very important. If you think you need to improve on your writing, I would recommend you take some type of course your freshman year of college. Because in college, you're going to be writing papers. You're going to be writing two-page papers, five-page papers, ten-page papers. And 
you've got to know how to construct a properly written paper. You can't have your first paragraph be the entire first page. It just doesn't work that way. So my advice that I always try to give students is try to do some type of writing course. Okay? The second one is public speaking. How many of you guys would feel comfortable getting up here right now and talking for 20 minutes straight? One, two, three, four. So less than a quarter of you, okay? One way to overcome that or to improve your public speaking skills is take a public speaking class. And they offer them in college. Freshman or sophomore year, I'd recommend it. When I was your age, there's no way in hell I could have gotten up for a class like this. Know, then 15 years later after college, I'm you know, sitting there addressing, doing media training for a team that just won the Stanley Cup. And you have to, you have to be able to get up in front of a group, whether you're doing a presentation in class, okay, that's even bigger in college, doing a group presentation, you might get into sales, you have to do a sales presentation when you get out of school. Um, you might have to present a project to a group. Or like I had an opportunity back in April where I went over to SMU and Lee Steinberg, who's this real uh, famous football agent, he's the guy, if you've ever seen the movie Jerry Maguire, he's the guy Jerry Maguire's based on. Um, I was on a panel at his symposium over at SMU. So any type of public speaking, and I took a public speaking course in college, that's how I got through it. I'm making my, I, I've made each of my kids take it. They hated it at first, but at the end they were like, I'm glad I took it. Because now I don't feel as nervous getting up in front of the class. Or I don't feel as nervous talking to people. Especially where you guys now live in an age where you're all doing this. The art of the conversation is getting lost. You know, you want to be able to be comfortable talking to several people, someone older than you, someone that's in a position you want to meet, some, or a presentation class. So, Levinson got accepted a Oklahoma State for their sports journalism, so that's what he wants to do. And Schroeder's working with Tommy Daniels, and he's that's what the field that he's interested in as well. So that We're good, yeah. good. So other than that, really, technology. Okay, for well, old guys like me and Leon, we've got to work hard to keep up with technology. You guys have been born into it. Okay, when I first started with the Rangers in 1987. You guys don't even use fax machines anymore. But a fax machine took six minutes to send one page. Six minutes. <laughs> now it's instant. Boom, right through. But, and now the fax machines are even being phased out. So it's technology, not only that you can take advantage of like that, but also computer technology. So I'm hiring for a position right now for social media and marketing coordinator. They need to know how to cut film, cut video, and put a video together. Important Photoshop, Illustrator, things like that. If you guys don't know how to use those, learn because it's only going to be to your advantage when you go for a job. Colin offers classes in those. PowerPoint or Prezi. You're doing a presentation. You've got to know how to use those. So if there's an opportunity for you to learn how to use those, take advantage of it because it's only going to put you up a notch over to somebody that doesn't know how to do it when you go for another internship or a job. Okay. Other things, organized, be organized. How many guys use uh, an online or Microsoft Outlook calendar to keep track of all your stuff? In the professional world, everybody does. What's that? I use a paper planner. Okay. Well, it's old school, and I, I still use a notepad, and I have an, 
Excel file every Monday morning that I update my list on every Monday of what I got coming out for the week. And by Wednesday, it looks trash because I've either added to it, crossed stuff off. Because that's how it goes. Try if you're not either using an Outlook calendar or a paper planner. Start. It will only help you when you get into college to keep track of when you have papers due, when you have exams, when you have tests, when you have important homework assignments due. Because it's very easy to get lost in everything you have going on if you don't stay organized. They all have day planners that they're required to bring to their internships to help with exactly with that. Okay, good. A um, couple of other things, you know, multitasking, the ability to think on your feet, or as we call it in hockey, change on the fly. And put it this way, very rarely anywhere in life does plan A go exactly the way you map it out. You better have ready plan B, C, and D in the back of your head, ready to go. The ability to be able to, and that's thinking on your feet, the ability to be able to, if something happens, what can I do to either fix it, change it, make it better? You know, it could be you're doing an, an event and the delivery doesn't come on time. What, what do you do? or you know, different things that happen, you've got to have an idea of, okay, um, you know, Mike Madonna was supposed to be at a radio, do a radio interview at 10 o'clock, but he never called in. Well, okay, I better either chase Mike down or find out where he is, or I better call the station and see if we can reschedule him. There's always something that you've got to think about, what's the backup plan, what's the alternative? What, you know, how do you adapt? How do you improvise? So kind of keep things like that in mind, too. And then, you know, we talked about earlier, the do whatever it takes attitude. People love that. You know, you might, um, you might have to do inventory. They sell t-shirts and they're going to make you go back and do inventory for two days. <coughs> and you're just going to sit there and count t-shirts. Well, be the best t-shirt counter they ever had. No, seriously, okay? So keep that mindset if you want to, you know, especially if this is the type of thing you want to do. The worst thing that can happen is someone that Leon has worked for over a year to allow a student in to do an internship and then that person has to call Leon and say, it's not working out. Or they're not showing up on time. Or they're not working hard or doing what we asked them to do. It's the worst thing that can happen. And to piggyback on that, the worst thing that can happen is it's because it's a relationship that I built and chances are it's a personal relationship. And someone was doing me a favor when we got the program going, but now that it's worked out, they're happy about it. But what happens is, and it hasn't happened with us, it's happened other places, if you get removed or something happens, we lose the internship. And that's a problem. Now, Leighton is back in because he impressed the guys at the NAHL enough that they were comfortable with letting him in. I had a first year, second year, some, you know, second year we didn't have anybody there. Now he's back in. But if you have a situation where you lose an internship, that's a personal relationship that it's affecting. Well, but it, and not only that, there, it's a relationship that he's built and is doing it as a favor to him, but it's a favor to him, he's the middleman, it's a favor to him to help you, okay? Like I said, you guys, I don't know of another high school or another district where high school kids are doing sports, sports management internships. It's, you know, if, let's just say, so you do this internship, and who's going to Oklahoma State? Okay. Then you go to Oklahoma State, and you go straight to the athletic department. Have a nice resume ready, or your LinkedIn also done, updated. And you say, listen, um, I'm a sports